Hello, uh, YouTube subscribers, uh, anybody who's coming to this uh, video from the Corn newsletter, uh, any extension agents who are giving it in a meeting or reviewing the video before they go to give this talk themselves in a meeting. Uh, I'm coming to you from Cotman Hall here on the Ohio State University main campus. Today we're going to talk about common Ohio winter annuals. Obviously, this is not a comprehensive list of all the winter annuals that are out there uh, in Ohio or beyond, uh, but this, this will give you a kind of a good overview of the most common ones or what I believe to be the most common ones are. Uh, first thing I want to talk about or, or cover is monocots versus dicots. <clears throat> so this is uh, grasses versus broadleaves. I did not put any grasses on this PowerPoint. This is all just dicots, so all broadleaf uh, winter annuals. Uh, so if there's a demand for monocot ones at a later point, I'd be happy to put something together. Uh, but most of our questions are based on uh, the dicots, so that's what we're going to go with. Some basic broadleaf morphology. Um, so I'll, I'll reference some terms, obviously not everything uh, I reference is listed on here, but uh, if you're going to talk about a cotyledon, a hypocotyl, a petiole, and a crea, a stipule, a stem, or anything listed on this diagram, there's just a visual representation uh, so you can go back and look and see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, also, you know, Google, if you ever just see a term that you're not familiar with, uh, don't be afraid to Google it and get a nice botanical explanation beyond what's provided here in this PowerPoint. Uh, leaf arrangement, alternate opposite world, basal rosette, uh, all really helpful. Um, we, we do cover specific species in this. Uh, we also give a little bit of family overview. Uh, if you ever get something that you're trying to identify and you want to take pictures and email it to us or even uh, call me uh, and try to describe it over the phone, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, but a lot of times uh, I'll still get phone calls and, uh, and I'll ask you like what's the what's the leaf arrangement or what's the leaf attachment uh, things like that this is just more terminology uh, to make sure we're all kind of speaking the same language um, once we're on the same page it's easier to move forward so alternate one leaf per node opposite two leaves per node on opposite sides world three or more leaves per node and base rosette leaves crowded towards base of plant. There's also how they are attached. Um, petioled leaf blade born on a stock, so a little branch going from the stem to the leaf is the petiole. Sessile, the leaf blade without petiole, so the leaf is attached directly to the stem, there's no branch. Connate is the opposite sessile leaves with, based, with the bases united, so it's uh, two leaves but they're wrapping around the stem touching each other. Uh, and stipulate uh, possesses lateral appendages, stipules at the base of the of the leaf, e.g. something, for example, something like black medic. So there's the, sometimes a petiole, sometimes they're sessile, but right below it or above it, there'll just be a little, little something sticking out that gives it a unique ID characteristic. Um, broad leaf identification terms, what's the type of leaf? Uh, simple, not divided into leaflets. Is it compound? If, if it's compound, uh, the leaf is divided into separate parts, the trifoliate, palmately compound, pinnately compound. Um, I'm going to kind of breeze through these because you can uh, you can read through these. Um, you know, the nice thing about a video or a slide you're looking at yourself, you can pause it or uh, take as much time as you need. Uh, I made this PowerPoint, so it's pretty much everything I'm going to say is listed on the slides, which I know is not uh, gonna set the world on fire and make this an exciting listen to but um, I know not many not not all will want to listen to my voiceover so sometimes it's better just to flip through and read them to yourself or read them out loud to yourself uh, leaf margin so the edge of the leaf uh, entire not serrated or lobed indented has a margin sawtooth uh, lobed or dissected leaf divided into segments something like giant ragweed or wild carrot uh, broadleaf identification terms continued. We have stems. Is it a herbaceous stem, a woody stem, or an aerial stem? 
Uh, stems continued as a subterranean or the underground stems, rootstock for storage and reproduction, uh, tuber, rhizome, or bulb, all um, great ID characteristics. Some plants, uh, we can get you really close to what it is based on what's above the ground. Uh, sometimes you got to dig up a little bit and let us see what's going on underneath to make an exact identification. Life cycles, um, you know, what makes a winter annual? So winter annuals are germinating now. Uh, they have been for a couple weeks and they will for a few more weeks. Uh, they're in their seedling stage. Uh, they'll get a little bit of size to them, you know, sit in that basal rosette or, um, you know, get a few leaves on them and then they'll overwinter in that shape. And then when spring rolls around is when they'll complete their life cycle. Uh, and usually as summer, we're going from spring to summer is when they're going to uh, complete their life cycle and put on mature seed or do whatever they need to do to finish it out. Versus summer annuals, which are the ones that germinate in the spring and complete their life cycle going into the fall. Biennials, uh, two year life cycle, and perennials, we have simpler creeping perennials. This slide is only dealing with winter annuals. Um, there are some species that have more than one life cycle, so if it's dominant life cycle is winter annual, uh, I also listed any secondary life cycles just you know they'll help uh, but they're not always exact so our first family excuse me I'm a cough <coughs> our first family is the Asteraceae the sunflower family so um, I get a lot of a lot of digital IDs uh, every year and depending on your situation uh, what the importance of the weed is uh, or how much information you have or how many pictures you, sh you sent um, I can say oh it's in this family it's probably related to this or this um, but if you want me to make an exact ID I need more information now is it do you need enough information because you're gonna uh, apply some herbicides or you want to control it uh, is it a curiosity you found on a walk in the woods or popped up in your garden um, some plants can be very difficult to ID and very time consuming uh, and I always tell people if you're really that passionate about it um, there's lots of great books I can recommend and if you want to flip through and identify it yourself uh, and then run run it by me and saying I think it's this can you confirm uh, it's usually pretty easy for me to do um, obviously if it's something moving in or it's taking over your field or it's a, a real cost for concern uh, made your cattle sick, your horses sick, um, something like that, then obviously I'm going to sit down and grind it out and make sure I let you know exactly what it is. Um, but, you know, there's only so much time in the day, and I do like to spend as much time with my kids as possible, so I don't always go four books deep to get the exact identification. But I usually always can tell you the point of that ramble is I can always tell you what the family is because... Uh, Fam Asteraceae used to be the composite family, so there's just a lot of, like, this is kind of the, everything gets thrown in there. If you're sure it's not a mustard and you're sure it's not something else, it's probably an aster. Uh, we have a couple really giant books of, on asters in my office. Um, so they, they catch a lot of different things. The, the species we're going to cover specifically with winter annuals are crestleaf groundsel, uh, common groundsel, and dandelion. You can read the family characteristics, uh, and those are the general, oh, it's got these characteristics, so it's probably in this family. That's what I'll, the first thing I go to is like, okay, it looks like this kind of weed that gets me in the ballpark, <clears throat> and you can use this to do the same for you. So first up is Crestleaf Groundsel, uh, weed of interest. Uh, Dr. Laux put up uh, a great presentation and did a voiceover not too long ago you can find that on our youtube uh, or off one of the corn old corn newsletter articles uh, for co control recommendations um, id characteristics winter annual or biennial um, most common winter annual iron branch but does not have short flowering stems in the upper axle axles uh, i always like to go to the hollow center stem which is light green to reddish green um, that's kind of my go-to. I tell people, I think I have this. I say, well, can you break off the stem? And you see that nice picture of the hollow stem. <clears throat> so there we have the kind of the, the shotgun blast of all the characteristics. Then I'm going to do a key characteristics for each species. 
Uh, stems, mid veins, and sometimes the leaves have a reddish green appearance. So that's kind of those those ridges, and then the outer uh, most protruding ridges is where you'll get the coloration. Uh, the hollow stem that is uh, quite stout, so you you don't think it's hollow because it's pretty thick and um, and rigid, but then you crack into it um, and you realize it's hollow. Uh, yellow flowers with petals that are narrowly long. The narrowly long is supposed to be the helpful thing. Typically, most people are just like it looks like a mustard and it has yellow flowers, <clears throat> and then we kind of have to dig a little bit deeper from there. Um, crest leaf groundsel. And the seedling form, you can see below, forms a basal rosette, bolts to form a mostly single, singular tall stem. Uh, there's a seedling pick also. When it's a, a seedling, um, this is one of those where um, a, a roundish, uh, slightly lobed or wavy margin seedling. There are so many of these when it's a tiny seedling. Um, this is a great example of the go-to weed sign saying of when in doubt, grow it out. Uh, if it's you know a situation where you're worried about it because you're gonna establish um, a grazing pasture or do some baling and you don't want it there, uh, just spray it and kill it, <laughs> You know, move on. Um, but if you wanna wait till it gets bigger and identify it, uh, that's, a lot, a lot of times um, with seedlings, if you really want to be sure, sometimes it's just a matter of letting them get a little bit bigger and then you can tell. I'm sure none of you want to hear that, but that's just how it is sometimes. Common groundsel, not crest leaf groundsel. Winter annual leaves are alternate usually with hairs, but may have a few and deeply lobed margins. Uh, branch stem without hairs are capable of rooting at the nodes. Good weed. Uh, key characteristics, single stem or branch near base, and combros, corium, coriumbros, sorry, I butchered that one. Uh, it's basically the flowers growing in such a fashion that the outermost are born on longer pedestals than the inner, bringing all the flowers up to a common level. Kind of a neat thing. Um, leaves, penifid. Uh, which is an arrangement of feather-like or multi-divided features arising from both sides on a common apex. So that'd be, let me get my mouse going, this one right here. They're just going up the, the main stem and they're coming off on either side frequently. Mm. Seedling, uh, cotyledons uh, elliptic to ovate. Again, when it's a tiny little seedling, eh, hard to hard to tell. Give it a couple days of growth or a week, usually pretty easy to pick out. Dandelion, uh, king of the weeds. I'll throw that in there for anybody who saw that video. One of my favorite quotes. Uh, winter annual perennial, deeply lobed leaves. Lobes generally opposite and pointed towards the base. Large yellow flower. Seed head look like a round puff ball. Uh, so obviously, if the if the flower is present, you think dandelion. Um, just to go back, the lobes generally opposite and pointed towards the base. So when you look at those leaves, they're broadest towards the tip, and as you go down towards the base, they narrow, and the leaves are lobes are usually directly across from each other, and that's when the flowers aren't present. That's the go-to ID characteristic. Um, no, no spines or anything. A lot of people, uh, a lot of asters, thistles, um, nothing on the mid vein, nothing on the margin, um, nothing on the other side of the leaf, and then they're widest at the tip and narrow going towards the base. <clears throat> uh, rosette of basal leaves attached to the crown. So, I don't know, dandelion's one of those things that it's, it's just a weed that everybody seems to know, but we still like to point it out. Uh, Lau Dr. Laux did a short uh, video not too long ago in um, Dandelion King of the Weeds. It's the actual title. It's been making a bit of a comeback based on um, climate change and uh, herbicide application programs and timing. It's kind of finding a nice niche to, to make, a, make a comeback. Um, it's, it's a really tough weed and it's, a, it's fun from a biological standpoint.
Brassicaceae or the mustard family. Flower having four petals, four long stamen, and two short stamens. Fruits called soliloquy or soliloquy. Uh, stems le stem leaves usually different shape and size than rosette leaves. Flowers mostly yellow or white. Uh, a lot of them in this family, yellow rocket, wild mustard, shepherd's purse, hairy bittercress, field pennycress, and field pepperweed. Uh, first up, yellow rocket. Um, if you're, you know, 15 minutes in and you're still listening to this and we're not even halfway through, <clears throat> I'm assuming you're fine with just listening to me uh, kind of prat on for a while about stuff. So a fun weed. I had this uh, sent to me uh, uh, by a clientele somewhere in Ohio sent me a whole bunch of pictures I said oh it's yellow rocket and uh, she emailed me back almost immediately says no it's not and I said okay uh, why and she goes well I just don't think it is so then I sent her the technical description of yellow rocket and took a couple uh, shots from my ID book I was using and I was like you know it looks exactly like the weed you sent me and the description is exactly right. And she goes, no, it's wrong. I'll just go seek advice from somebody else. So uh, you can't win them all, folks. I guess that's the moral of the story. But it, it, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it will always be Yellow Rocket. I never heard from her to see if she got somebody else to agree with her that it wasn't Yellow Rocket, but I'd really love to find out. Um, <clears throat> no hair on leaves or stem. Leaf margin deeply lobed with lobes different sizes and separated by some distance. We'll zoom in here. So this is kind of the yellow rocket leaf. You get the big tip, and then then the the leaf, the lobe gets really narrow here along the mid vein, and this is the regular where usually one side's bigger and the other side's smaller. But you can see how there's just this kind of thin, fleshy um, margin next to the mid vein, and those are the, those are the extended lobes of the leaf. Um, flowers bright yellow, seed pods slender and slightly curved. Uh, Cotyledons ovate, slightly notched at the tip uh, on long stalks. It's the really long stalks and then that has that first leaf. This is one of those if you just wait a little tiny bit, like here you'll see one where it doesn't have the little second one yet, but then it pops out pretty quick. Usually by your second or third leaf, you're like, oh yeah, yellow rocket. Wild mustard, winter or summer annual, leaves alternate, lower leaves have petioles and irregularly lobed with hairs. More bright yellow flowers. Stout plant, yellow flowers and conspicuous clusters of uh, branch terminals. Um, it's actually got a really pretty flower. A lot of these have these beautiful yellow flowers. Um, <clears throat> cotyledon rounded to heart shaped leaves alternate hairy stems and leaves so the wild mustard the seedlings have these beautiful hairs all over them and then you can see them on the margins also great ID characteristics shepherd's purse Winter annual, very short and numerous hairs on leaves and stems uh, tooth to sharply lobed leaf margin Seed capsules look like little purses. So, basil rosette of leaves, uh, arrow shaped stem leaves, triangular fruits, solilo soliloquial with little indentations and now wings. So, you can see the little kind of tiny heart shaped um, soliloquial. Hypocotyl light green to a purple tinged. Um, I always like to point out you get a lot of color variation on weeds depending on weather, growing conditions, time of year. Um, unless you're looking specifically at the hypocotyl, uh, which is from the soil level to the cotyledons, uh, it's pulling, still pulling the nutrients from the cotyledons and you'll have a really consistent color there with your seedling. So if it's listed as red or purple or uh, tinged or, or radiant, uh, specifically when you're looking at a hyper, hypercoddle, that's the only one of the few times that I really can go confident, confident with what the color is supposed to be. Hairy bittercress. 
Um, winter annual erect and usually freely branching stems that are glabrous. Leaves are alternate mostly in rosette and deeply pinnately lobed. Basal leaves in rosette, pinnately lobed and reinformed to slightly elliptical terminal division. Petioles solilitate four white petals that flower in the spring. Um, not typically a huge agronomic weed, but we do see it um, early on when it's kind of like this. As people all get like, oh, is that chickweed? And then you look a little bit closer and you're like, no, it's not chickweed. So, hairy bittercress. Cotyledons broadly ovate to uh, orbicular with slightly indented tips. Firstly, triangular ovate to reinform pubescent wavy margins and petiolate. Um, nice seedlings. Field pepperweed, again, not necessarily the biggest weed, but it's around. We see it pretty consistently, so we're going to put it on the list. Excuse me. <coughs> Winter annual. Uh, rosette leaves and lower stem leaves are rounded, but tapered to the base. Margins may be either lobe toothed or entire, so a lot to work with there. Upper stem leaves do not have petioles and are clasping at the base. So the clasping of the base means they wrap around. You can see kind of right there. Good picture. Even better one there. Unique seed head, uh, clasping stem leaves, oval and robust fruit, plant covered with short hairs. So a lot of these mustards are, uh, is there hair? Where is the hair? How much of the hair is there? Which in truth, um, there's a lot of different uh, families where it's just a matter of where's the hair at, how much of it is it, and then what kind of hair is it. So you learn to get really familiar with pubescent, pubescence on uh, weeds. Field pepperweed cotyledons occur on petioles, are hairless, and are oval. Young leaves are alternate on long petioles and circular in outline. So great, lots of great description there. Field pennycress, uh, herbaceous annual or winter annual, no hair on leaves or stem, and leaves have peppery to garlic odor. Um, aromatic plants, kind of my favorite. Uh, for some reason, if a weed has a really specific scent to it, once you smell it and you've confirmed that's what it is, you can confirm it uh, by by scent perpetually it's uh, they just have really when they when they when they have an aroma they usually have a unique aroma um, leaf margins rounded and shallowly lobed clasping smooth leaves seed caps is roundish to oblong and notched at the top odiferous fun to say seedling characteristics hypocot along stalked hairy cotyledon bluish green stalked ovate to oblong with a prominent mid vein blade slightly lobed this is again one of those when in doubt grow it out if the seeds there it's great field pinning crest looks like basically like a, a, th a fingerprint on both sides it's a great little seed but the seedling is a real pain uh, lamiaceae family the mint family uh, this is one of those uh, leaves opposite square stem so if you got a square stem, you you know snap snap the stem if it's a box and it's got opposite leaves on it, you immediately know you're in the mint family. Most of them are aromatic. Uh, we're gonna cover two of them with henbit and purple dead nettle. Um, henbit winter annual or summer annual, most often winter annual. Cecil no petioles, leaves at nearly all flower nodes but petioles below. So that's one of those, when you're up at the top of the plant, the leaves are sessile, but as you go down the plant, then you'll get, um, you'll get petioles. So that can be kind of confusing and condescending. Leaves and stems less hairy and plant shorter than purple dead nettle. Again, less hairy, more hairy, unless they're next to each other and they're growing in the exact same conditions. Uh, same with the height, really, really it's kind of wishy-washy. Um, I think the the leaves are more uh, kind of like rounded, like of a like a bow tie is what I always kind of come up with in bit. 
Uh, stems are square, flowers are not pedicelled, leaves are not reflexed, no petiole at nearly all the flower nodes, but not all of them. Hypocotyl is smooth and green, but fades into a dull purple. Cotyledons are oval and smooth. True leaves have a midvein that ends in a gland at the leaf tip. Petals have spreading hairs. It's lots of lots of ID characteristics for the seedlings, and they're usually pretty easy to pick apart as seedlings based on those. So, uh, purple dead nettle. These these I t teach these in undergrad lab. They get confused all the time. I think they look fairly different, but. They are in the same family. They do have the opposite leaves and the square stem. Uh, these, I think, are more of a, a triangular uh, leaf versus that rounded leaf of henbit. Uh, but a lot of, like you said, a lot of struggle. Nearly all the leaves have petioles. Leaves and stems have more hair than henbit. Again, nearly all the leaves have petioles, which means some of them don't have petioles. And then the leaves and stems have more hair than henbit, which means some of the time, but if they're not next to each other, it's really hard to tell them kind of apart. Square stem, reddish purple flowers, bristly scalloped, um, peti petioles leaved, petioles, petioled leaves. Excuse me, really struggle with that one. Uh, but again, this is you can see these this gradient of leaves. A little bit more triangular, a little bit more of a point versus that rounded. Um, and then you can see this, you know, the leaves being on petioles on a few of these. Um, but again, sometimes they're, they're not petioled. Uh, this one, I, I worked with this when I was doing my master's research and it has a very unique aroma. Uh, you know, you think mint family, you're thinking, oh, it smells like mint. No, it's kind of like, uh, oh, it's kind of like damp or, or moist. I don't know, pungent. I, it's just a unique smell that I don't like, um. We'll get back on track here. Uh, seedling characteristics, cotyledons, oval and glabrous. First leaves opposite, hairy, and orbicular. I need to take a drink. I'm getting cotton mouth. Rubaceae, family characteristic. Leaves are simple and usually entire and are opposite or sometimes whirled. Stipulates are present in interpetiolar. Flowers are perfect. Uh, catchweed bed straw. One of my favorite weeds, whenever I'm on a walk with my kids, if I see it, I grab it and I throw it on them and it sticks to them and they think it's hilarious every time. Someday they're going to get a little bit older and they'll just be really annoyed, but right now, absolutely love it. Winter, summer, annual, linear, uh, square stem, recurve spines on sides, stem and leaves, uh, small linear leaves and whorls, Prostate and mat forming growth habit leaves six to eight world square stem angles covered with retro sorry. But you can see the tiny little the tiny little bristles everywhere. Retrorse. Sorry, I had to get that out. Um it means they're kinda of like hooked, basically. Uh hypocotyl and lower surface of cotyledons tinged with purple. First leaves opposite with bristle-like hairs. So it's one of those you can fill them and they, it kind of sticks to anything. Kind of think like uh, little little barbed hairs. So just great at sticking to stuff. Figwort family. Um, leaves opposite many Veronica's initially and alternate most other stems round. Speedwells, corn and purslane speedwell. These have been kind of uh, on the rise the last ooh, five to ten years. Um, randomly from homeowners, a few more coming in from growers, producers. Um, just kind of slowly spreading. I don't know if it's one of the, you know, if the the sporadic weather, uh, cl the climate change, um, herbicide programs just creating more of an opportunity i don't know if it's a, it's you know all the things working together to just make the speed wells do a little bit better uh first up is corn speed well winter annual lower leaves opposite round to ovate with tooth margin upper leaves alternate linear and hairy so this is like you know anytime they talk about upper versus lower leaves you know how big is your plant what is there to look at so your lower leaves opposite, your upper leaves alternate, and then that linear and hairy. So this would be 
kind of far away. This is your lower leaves, and this is when it bolts, and they're a little bit higher up. There we go. These would be your upper leaves. Erect or mostly spreading growth habit. Leaves opposite on lower stems and alternate above. Flowers solitary and leaf axils. Blue violet throat becoming white. Fruit heart shaped. Um, but I like to go with the blue flower and then the dense hair. Kind of makes me think a little bit of mousy or chickweed. Uh, but then the growth habit is different. But like that, that darker green with a really thick amount of hair when they're small. Uh, makes it run through your mind. Cotyledons lancelot oblong tips blunt. First true leaves opposite ovate to triangular margins. Crenate and pubescent. Purslane speedwell. Uh, this one is the one I think we get a little bit more of. It gets a lot taller and stands out a little bit more and seems to last longer into the season. Small oval shaped leaves with no hair. So corn, hair, purslane, no hair. Single flower with short or no pedicel heart-shaped capsule. Uh, opposite and alternate leaves arrangement, so not helpful there. Leaves oblong to a, a lot with tooth to entire margins. Flower and raceme of inconspicuous solitary white flowers. Fruits are notched. So I think with the 10 years I've been getting this weed, uh, the corn speed well I get more from homeowners and uh, the blue flower is pretty consistent um, and the hair uh, being present and then we've been seeing the purslane speedwell out in the field a little bit more in no-till situations uh, and it gets a good you know six to eight inches kind of at the end of its life cycle it's pretty tall uh, but the no hair and the white flower um, and flower color you want to say it's consistent, but inevitably it ends up not being so. Don't bake, bank on that. You know, pull it out, look at it, see if there's hair on there. Uh, and you should be able to distinguish between the two. Seedling characteristics. Cotyledons elliptical, first true leaves opposite, all, oblong to linear, oblong, irregular tooth, glabrous, or pubescent. Trichromes are glandular. So there's a nice little seedling. It, like I said, I think this one just has a tendency to get a little more erect and just kind of go for it versus uh, corn seems to be a little shorter, a little more prostrate. It seems to be just like a little round seedling that kind of sits there. Carophiliaceae, the pink family, leaves opposite entire and usually united at the base, uh, usually swollen nodes, common chickweed, uh, winter annual, light green opposite egg-shaped leaves, no hair on leaf blades but on stem and petiole. Um, Stems are pubescent in lines, so you can see the swollen nodes there, little egg-shaped leaves, petioles unite at the base. Hypocotyl slender and often reddish with few hairs. Cotyledons are long, have tender petioles, and are sparsely hairy. So that's it for the weeds. If you have any questions, uh, whether for control or identification purposes. Dr. Laux is really good about handling the large majority of herbicide recommendations. I am really good about handling the large majority of the weed ID. Um, and we're both comfortable doing the other. Uh, and if we're ever in doubt, we always have the other person to run it by, which is great. Uh, our weeds blog, uh, u.osu.edu backslash OSU weeds. Uh, all kinds of great information there. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or at on our YouTube site if you're not already watching this here, there, at OSU Weed Science. Um, corn newsletter, Weed Science website, Weed Control Guide, direct uh, address for the YouTube page. My email address one more time because you can never have it enough. <clears throat> and then resources, um, Weed Control Guide for Indiana, Agronomy Guide, Ohio State University Guide, Weed, weed Identification, and references. I normally really like to use all my own pictures, but uh, to do a complete workup with 
Um, just really in-depth pictures from all angles, all the beautiful pictures you saw. We kind of got them from all over the place. Um, Nathan Komet, our 2020 summer research assistant, student research assistant, uh, helped pull, pull a lot of this together. Uh, so I always like to give credit where credit is due. Um, if you have any questions, shoot me an email. Um, I sometimes take for granted uh, how many weeds I get an ID a year and how it's become second nature to me. I know uh, just going out into a field and going, oh my god, I need to figure out what these weeds are can be very daunting. Um, but realistically in Ohio, there's about 60 weeds that once you get, you know, you get the first five in your back pocket and you get to 10, 20, 30, you can do it relatively quickly. And then uh, it's just, you know, repetition and comfort. But when in doubt, if it's something weird or you don't know what it is, or you're not sure, uh, with modern technology, uh, smartphones, it's pretty easy to snap a couple pictures, send me a text or an email, and I can say, oh yeah, it's that, or um, it's, it's related to this, what are you worried about, and go from there. Um, so thanks for listening. If you made it all the way to the end, um, it, was a lot, it was a lot of talking, a lot of slides, but I feel like we, we covered some good ground. Have a great day, folks.